Welcome everybody to the 2019 Department of Communication graduation celebration. That's right. My name is David Domke. I am a professor here in the Department of Communication. Uh, I have the privilege to be chair of the Department of Communication. I and our faculty and our staff are all extremely pleased that you all made it today, all the graduates or soon-to-be graduates, the family, the friends that are all here. And apparently, we had about 50 more folks from Washington State that decided to show up in terms of seats. So we're a little, we had to fill in, and that was the ingenuity of, uh, of our group. So lovely having you all here on this beautiful day in the quad. Job one today is to make sure that you stay hydrated. So we have waters in the back and waters in the side, if you're interested, all right? Don't at any moment in time hesitate to get that and drink that water if you're feeling in any way that it would be helpful, okay? So I'd like to start with two distinct welcomes today um, on this day. First of all, I would like to welcome the graduates today. This includes our undergraduates. <laughs> what? Yeah, you can sit. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, the faculty that are up here on the stage, you see different regalia, different colors. This, this is indicative, um, for those of us that have that, of the last university that we attended. So I'm from the University of Minnesota, that's what this color is for, and you see different colors. Um, so if any of you buy your regalia after today, you would have the purple that you see with our graduate students. So we have MA, we have undergraduates today graduating, we have master's students graduating. And we have PhDs, which is the doctorate of philosophy also. Graduating students today, this is your day. This is your day first and foremost. We'd love, if you're able, to ask you to stand for a moment so that we can all just give them a huge round of applause, all right? So on your caps is a tassel. The tassel's worn on the right before graduation. So if you've got it on the left, flip it over. Worn on the right before graduation, and then move to the left after graduation. At the end of our ceremony today, we'll symbolically move it to the left together, but right now it's on the right. The second distinct welcome today is to all the guests. These are parents, Grandparents, cousins, brothers, sisters, spouses and partners, boyfriends and girlfriends, friends, people who are just walking through the quad right now, <laughs> all right? This is your day also. It's a great achievement for your child or your sibling, your friend or your partner to graduate from college. And we know that you, the many who have been in these students' lives, have been with them for days and months and years. You've been sharing their joys as well as their worries. You've been paying bills. That's right, thank you. You've been listening and providing advice, encouraging, cleaning their dishes and rooms and laundry, buying them energy drinks and food and all kinds of things, asking them to eat healthy, and helping them, I'm sorry, helping to pick them up when they stumble. And everyone stumbles. 
Everyone on this stage has struggled and stumbled in life multiple times. And so all of you who are here today as a loving connector to the students have done that for them, help them in those moments. So graduates, those of you that are graduating today, if you're able, I'd ask that you now stand, take a moment and give a round of appreciation to those folks in your life, okay? Our graduation ceremony today will unfold uh, this way. I will provide some brief remarks about the department and about this day, and I'll be followed by our commencement speaker, Ms. Colleen Fakui Sketchley. After Ms. Fakui Sketchley speaks, we will present our graduates with their degrees, starting with our newly minted Doctorate of Philosophies and finishing with our undergraduates. All the students will come across the stage and have their names announced. They get a chance to smile, to wave, to dance, to take selfies, whatever they want, within reason. And as they do that, when we get to that point of the ceremony, you're all welcome, if you so wish, to come up close and take photos and see them just respecting each other's space and moment when they're loved one is gonna be coming across the stage. The students will come up the platform over here and come across the stage this way when we get to that moment. After the conferring of degrees, we will close the celebration with the moving of the, the mortar board tassel. We then encourage all to stay afterwards to socialize, to say hello to faculty, to staff, take photos, whatever you wish. We all would be happy to meet you and your loved ones today. This is one of the best days of the year for us faculty, us staff. It isn't just a great day for you. It is one of our happiest days too. And we are honored to be able to share this day with you in this beautiful space at the University of Washington. So this is a landmark day. It's a landmark day for everyone here. I've been a graduate three times in my life. I'm approaching graduation for a child of mine. I'm starting to kind of see the different emotions and feelings that you have when you sit in different places. To the graduates, I'd like to just say a few words. I'd encourage you to think back to your first quarter here at the University of Washington. Maybe you were a freshman, a junior. Maybe you were a first-year doctoral candidate or a newly arrived Masters of Communication student. I'd like you, I'd encourage you to take a moment to remember what you were feeling at that time in your life. The sense of excitement, the fear, the anxiety, the overwhelmness, the enthusiasm, there were motivations and values and feelings. You had decided to come here for some reason. There were things that kept you up at night, some because of nerves and some because you were excited. Every day you'd wake up and you would approach the day in a new way. You had hopes. Now you're all here today. You've taken those moments, those feelings, those expectations, and you have grown. Inside and outside the classroom, you have grown. You have met people who will be a part of your life from today forward, and you have grown together. Classmates, faculty, staff, they have challenged you. We have challenged you. We have also championed you. You have championed one another. Your growth does not end today. Today is a landmark day, but what comes after this is going to be even better. If we, all of us on this stage, all of 
your friends and family here today, if we have served you well, then we have helped you change and grow in ways that will become your default approaches to life, that you will continue. Just yesterday, I did a phone call with a student who had graduated two years ago, an absolute, unbelievably talented individual who's now working in Washington, D.C. And the growth that she is going through at this point in her professional life is on her shoulders. It is her to make happen. You carry that opportunity with you today. We will always be here rooting for you and ready to support. In your time at the University of Washington, you have researched topics that you are passionate about. You have developed new skills. You have pushed yourself to produce work that exceeded not only our expectations, but really more importantly, your own expectations. May you continue to bring curiosity and creativity to all that you do, graduates. We, we desperately need you to do that. You also have grown in your relationships. It is not only our work that defines us as people, but the communities that we create, both online and offline. Graduates, you have built networks of shared interests, passion, projects, and support, supportive spaces. In a communication landscape crowded by technology, you have not lost sight of the importance of trusted relationships. It is that sense of being able to build connections and community that we have to have going forward. You have done all of this in significant part because of your strength and courage. Your strength and courage. Strength and courage reveal themselves both in moments when we face physical threats. We know that. That's how we talk about strength and courage in our modern day. But it also manifests, they manifest, in everyday moments of our shared struggle for a more just and equitable society. Such as when we choose compassion over indifference when bad things happen to other people. Or when we decide that we won't laugh when someone tells a sexist joke. Or when we are willing to acknowledge that we were wrong on something important. Or when, on a different day from today, we engage in a public protest in this very same quad in support of our ideals of justice, equality, freedom, and opportunity. Things that this university needs to constantly be pushed to do better. These communication moments also require strength and courage, and they change the world in real and better ways. We as a world have been honoring three important anniversaries in the United States this month. The 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which constitutionally affirmed that women have fundamentally the right to vote. Second, we have been recognizing and honoring and appreciating the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion and liberation of Europe in World War II. If you are a currently serving or veteran of our armed services, we thank you for the opportunity today to have this ceremony right here. And we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion in New York City, which is seen as a landmark moment in the struggle for gay, lesbian, and transgender rights. All of these were enacted by people who said, I will be strong and courageous. I will be. We are honored by their leadership, by their sacrifice, 
by their risk, by their strength, by their courage. And we have a responsibility to carry forward, graduates, their legacies. In our world today, one very real act of strength and courage, one that doesn't tend to be the lead story in major news, any major news outlet, is to make the commitment to go to and then to complete a college degree. Today in the United States, among people 25 years old or older, just over 30% have completed a bachelor's degree, just about one third. The percentage of adults in the United States who have completed a graduate degree is even less, 12%. There are all kinds of reasons, economic, political, cultural, legal, and otherwise, that lead people either to not or to not be able to attend or complete college. We are fortunate to be here, literally right here, right now. I want you to know that, graduates, that what may feel at the end of this journey as no big deal because you, it's here and you kind of like, it's just another day today, is actually not no big deal. It is what we might call a big phenomenal deal, okay? <laughs> It is a strong and courageous move. Whether you are receiving a Bachelor of Arts, a Master of Arts, a Master of Communication, or a Doctor of Philosophy, you have done something that distinguishes you. We all rejoice in this moment with you. Congratulations. Each year, we have a distinguished member of the Department of Communication community whom we ask to speak to our graduating class. We select this person from our members of the Department of Communication Alumni Hall of Fame, people who have graduated from the department and we have recognized by inducting them into an Alumni Hall of Fame. We have remarkable alums and our Hall of Fame has community leaders in so many domains, in business, in journalism, in the arts, in politics, in the environment, in law and justice, and so much more. Each year from this group, we select a distinguished alumna and we ask them to speak at our graduation celebration. When we select a distinguished speaker, we choose people who have accomplished great things and have exhibited a long commitment to doing good things. To be highly successful in one's professional area is important, but so too is to have made a difference in a positive way in the world. Our 2019 distinguished alum, Colleen Fakui Sketchley, is such a person. Not long ago, Colleen was a student like all of our graduates today. She worked hard, she found and pursued interests, she got to know some faculty and took many classes. She bonded with some fellow students. She probably got frustrated with others. When she speaks in a moment, I challenge all of our students to listen to her and say, I wanna be someone like Colleen. Colleen is a pillar of the business and civic and education arenas in the Seattle area and around the country. She is in her own proud words, a fourth generation Japanese American who was born and raised in the Seattle area. Her family moved to Portland when she entered the eighth grade, but they realized that Washington was a better place to live, so they moved back. That's a joke, all right? <laughs> After four years, they came back. She said that her dad told her that she should go to college to learn about life. And ultimately, that's the work that UW and other institutions of higher education are involved in. Colleen graduated from our unit in 1994 and in the years since has made a massive positive mark on our community and region. In your commencement program, there is some information about Colleen. I encourage you to look at that when you have a moment. I'd like to share two things about Colleen that are not in that overview and are part of why we asked her to speak today. 
First, Colleen has devoted her professional work to one of the most important challenges facing America and the world, which is the building and cementing of a more just and inclusive society. When she was a student here in the early 1990s, she started a part-time sales position at Nordstrom. She joined the company full-time two weeks after graduation. Eventually, she gained an opportunity to work in the area known then as diversity affairs and now known as diversity and inclusion. Over the next two decades, she was a leader for Nordstrom in building practices and values that provided opportunities and support for all peoples. She collaborated, she cast a vision, she listened, she spoke up, and she had enormous impact in making a great Northwest company even better. In recent years, she sought a new challenge and now is doing even broader and deeper work at F5 Networks as the Senior Director of Diversity and Inclusion. Her goal, in her own words, is to build and sustain a, quote, culture of belonging. This is hard, hard work, but it is work that we all must care about and do in our own ways if we are going to have any chance at all to get out of this difficult and divided world toward a more democratic future. Second, Colleen has a fundamental commitment to opening the door for those coming after her. She was raised with values in which each individual is inseparably interwoven with the communities around them. This is why she serves on so many organizational boards and in so many leadership roles in the region, including here on campus, where in 2010, she became the youngest president of the University of Washington Alumni Association in that organization's history still to today. In an interview in 2014, Colleen said this, when one has the opportunity to be exposed to the vast needs of our friends and neighbors, it is not an option to idly sit by and do nothing. It is not, I'm sorry, I am incredibly inspired, she said, by so many leaders in our community who give everything they have to improve the lives of others, and I will continue to do what I can do to make the same. Graduates, I ask you to internalize this value, to not idly sit by. This commitment to making sure that whatever door you've either walked through or knocked down to get here, that we do all we can to help the next person have even more opportunities. Students, as you come across this stage, in just a few minutes, and Colleen and I have the privilege and the honor to shake your hands, please consider the moment of congratulation and a passing of the baton from one person and a stage of life to the next. That's how we move this world forward in positive ways, passing the baton, one person, and in this case, one UW communications student at a time. We are all in this together. So folks, please join me in welcoming our 2019 Distinguished Communications Speaker, Ms. Colleen Fakui Sketchley. That's not intimidating. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so incredibly touched by this recognition, I took the time to look at the list of people who came before me um, who received this recognition, and they are people I look up to, they are my friends, they are my mentors, and to be associated in a list with them is mind-blowing and uh, humbling. So I thank you so much for this. I also feel really fortunate that I have been invited to be a part to celebrate one of the most momentous moments of your lives. I want to thank the School of Communication and in particular David Domke for this humbling recognition and it turns out that this is also one of the most monumental moments of my life. So as you as graduates have your friends and family in attendance so do I. So I appreciate my family being here today. For a speech communication major, this is like the ultimate final. <laughs> this is comms 220 for those of you who took public speaking. 
This is COMS 220 on steroids. <laughs> so I appreciate this. For many of you, you remember right before you were to come here, um, people probably said to you, it's gonna go by fast. Make sure you suck up every opportunity that you can there because it's gonna go by fast, right? Learn everything you can because it's gonna go by fast. And after about the 19th time somebody tells you that, you sort of roll your eyes and you think, yeah, 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 got it. <laughs> it's gonna go by fast. Well, now you're here and you probably have to admit to yourselves that those people were right and that it did go by really fast. Now picture where I am. I was exactly where you are 25 years ago. And I am here to tell you that that 25 years went as fast as your last four or five or six, right? The last 25 years went as fast as your last four. So if what I say is true and that the next 25 years are just gonna whiz by, then I thought I would just provide just a few parting words um, to help you make the most out of that 25 years. The 450 something of you who are graduating today and really all of us here today have the opportunity to make a difference. Whether that is through our words as communication majors but equally as important through our actions. I'm gonna make three points today, three quick points through three quick stories. I know that I stand between you and coming on this stage, which is the most important part of today, so I promise I will make this quick. My first story took place here at the University of Washington. It was my senior year. I was taking a class called American Public Address um, in the communication department. It was right here in Parrington Hall, very hot building on the top floor. Um, and uh, one day we watched a speech by Dr. Martin Luther King. At the end of the speech, the professor, at that time was Professor Purcell, stopped the VHS tape, for those of you who know what that is, and turned on the lights, and to our surprise, he was overcome with emotion. And without saying another word, he dismissed the class early. And on my walk home that day, I had an epiphany. Professor Purcell was like six feet, 10 inches tall. I am not exaggerating. Bow tie, very professorial. And uh, some, watching someone like him being brought to tears was really a profound moment for me. And it was that moment that I realized for the first time that work could actually feel like that. So while I did not know what I wanted to do after graduation, I now knew though what, how I wanted to feel about what I did for a living. So my first point is this, be intentional and care about what you are doing. Be intentional and care about what you are doing. My second story is a French fable that was told to me by my boss, and it's the story of a hummingbird. One day, a terrible fire broke out in the forest and a huge woodlands was suddenly engulfed by a raging wildfire. Frightened, all of the animals went fleeing from their homes and out of the forest, and they came to the edge of a stream where they all looked at the fire and were feeling really discouraged and powerless. And they're all looking at it thinking that there was nothing that they could do to put out this fire, except for one little hummingbird. This particular hummingbird decided that it was going to do something. So went to the stream, filled up its little beak, went to the fire and spit it on the fire, went back to the stream, filled up his beak, went back to the fire, and did this over and over and over. All the other animals were making fun of him and being discouraging and saying, you're never gonna make the difference, right? 
your wings are going to burn up, your beak is too tiny, there's no way that you're going to put this fire out. One of the animals in a mocking voice even just said, what do you think you're doing? And the hummingbird said, I am doing what I can. So it's about doing your part. Don't worry about solving sort of the world's problems, right? That's big. Don't worry about solving the world's problems, but remain committed to just doing your part. The leaders that I admire are people who do their part. They, they do it by extending themselves and by being generous with their time and their words with the people they come in contact with. They're also very passionate about global good. And so I encourage you to look for ways um, and opportunities to make a difference whenever and wherever you can. So, second point is do your part, regardless of how small or large that may be. My last story is the story of a starfish, which is a story adapted from Lauren Isley's The Star Thrower. One day a man was walking along the beach and he saw a little girl picking up starfish and throwing them into the ocean. So he walked up to her and said, why are, why are you throwing starfish into the ocean? And she said, the sun is up, the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them in, they will die. And the man said, but young lady, there are miles and miles of beach and there are starfish amongst all those miles. You cannot possibly make a difference. And at that point, she picked up another starfish and she threw it into the ocean. And as the starfish hit the water, she says, but it makes a difference for that one. And as you can imagine, the next day, there's two of them throwing starfish into the ocean. So imagine if all 450 plus of you extended yourselves and you did your part to make a difference in the starfish of your lives, it's gonna be exponential goodness. As communication majors, we have the opportunity to be the voice for the voiceless, to be influential and courageous, and I know that whatever it is you decide to do, it's gonna be brilliant. Have you ever thought about why we end our college years at an event called commencement? It probably for some of you feels like the end to something. David Domke referred to that. It feels like the end when actually it's the beginning where cool things are about to happen. So if you do your part, you make a difference in the lives of the people that you touch and you are passionate about what you do. I promise you will always be able to look back and be proud of how you spent that 25 years. So congratulations and best wishes to all of you.